Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Nagios, and today we're going to be doing a jump start on Nagios XI so that you can start monitoring your mission critical assets quickly. This will be a quick video, so let's just go ahead and get started. The VM has finished powering on. As you can see here on the banner at the top, we have an IP address right there along with some default credentials. These default credentials are for the command line of Nagios XI, and this IP is where we can navigate towards the web interface. If your banner does not appear, you can log in using those default credentials. They'll be the same across any platform. Once you log in, you'll go ahead and type in the command IPA, and you guys, you can see right here, is the same IP address as displayed on the banner. Now using your desired web browser, we are going to go ahead and navigate to that virtual machine. And we'll click access Nagios XI. Again, this is a fresh install, so we won't have anything being monitored in here. At this page, we can change our time zone as well as our language and our theme for our user interface. I like the dark theme, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to dark theme. We speak English and uh, we will go ahead and leave our time zone as the American Chicago. We have a bunch of different languages here, as you can see. For this bottom part here for license settings, you'll want to click this big blue button that says get a trial key and you'll be redirected where you'll put in some information here and a email will send you a trial key. You can also do a free license here, but this is only for seven nodes. If you already have a license key, you'll switch over to this license button here and put in your key here. I have a trial key, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in like so, and then I will click next. Your username will be Nagios Admin. You can change this password to whatever you want it to be. Same with the full name in the email address. I'm gonna go ahead and change this password to something a little bit more memorable. So we'll go like this. I will put in my name here. And for the email address, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a predetermined IT email. like so. And this will be the same email account that sends email notifications. You'll want to make sure that this email is going to be the same one that will be sending email notifications in your environment. Once we're satisfied with the settings, we will click finish install. And again, once the install is finished, we are shown our username and password that we set in the last step. We'll click this blue button that says login to XI and we'll get this login screen. Every time you're going to log into Nagios XI, this is the screen you're going to see and you'll just use the credentials that were given on the last page. Once we accept the license agreement and click submit, we will have the home page of Nagios XI. As you can see here, the home page has some brief critical information. If we had hosts that were down or in a critical state, we would be able to see those right here. These are a bunch of clickable links, as well as pretty much everything that we see on this screen is interactable. Again, since this is a brand new XI instance, we don't have anything being monitored right now aside from the XI VM. And if we were to click this host right here, we would see that local host is our regular VM. Right here, we have just some service checks here for the local host as well. From the homepage, we can run a configuration wizard to start monitoring something, or we can view reports and graphs that have been generated. In the description below, we'll have a link to a video that covers the modules here. First thing we're gonna go ahead and do is configure email notifications. So at the top, we will click admin, and then we will click email settings on the left-hand side here underneath system config. Now it is worth saying that the admin page is quite overwhelming. We will have a video linked in the description below again with a walkthrough of the entire admin page and it'll briefly cover each of these options you see here on the left hand side. So anyway, uh, we're in our email settings. Uh, root at localhost is going to be blocked by pretty much all mail servers. So we're going to need to either set up a proxy or have a pre-configured email that XI can send emails through. You can set up emails using OAuth with Gmail or OAuth with Microsoft as well. You can also use SMTP with basic auth. And again, a proxy would probably be needed here for this SMTP settings. 
In the description below, we'll have a link to our knowledge base article that goes over the different ways you can have email notifications set up. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and click this send mail and change this email address here to the one that I set in the beginning stages, which was nagios underscore it at nagios.com. Just like that, you can click update settings. And then if we wanted to, we could send out a test email address. And as you can see, it was sent to this email address here. So now that we've got our notification set up, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is monitor a website. At the top, we'll hover over configure and then click configuration wizards. There's an icon that looks like the planet Earth. You can click that and you'll be able to then click website or website URL. Otherwise, you can use this search function here and type in website and you'll be shown the different things you can monitor. For this one, we will just click the website module and we will put in our URL. This can be anything you want. For the sake of this video, I'm going to monitor our main website, nagios.com, and we will click Next. Once I clicked Next, Nagios XI reached out and collected a bunch of data from the web server. As you can see here, the IP address of our website is displayed. We also have some information on our port. We have a redirect, and then we also have some website services that we can monitor, which would be HTTP. We have a basic ICMP ping. We can also have XI make sure our DNS name is valid as well as having our DNS match the IP. We also can monitor some code as far as JSON or HTML, and we have some configuration wizards on that as well. And then we can monitor the certs that are on each site. For the sake of this video, we'll monitor, let's see, we'll monitor everything except for DNS resolution. It's worth mentioning here at the top in hostname, you can change this to whatever you want. It does not need to match web URL. For this video, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Once we're satisfied with what we wanna monitor here, we can click next. Here we have the check interval. So basically every five minutes, XI is going to reach out to nagios.com and go ahead and run through all those service checks to make sure everything is responding. It'll also make sure that the website itself is responding to pings. That'll happen every five minutes. Should Nagios XI be down or offline for whatever reason, XI will do what's called a recheck interval. So every minute up to five times, it'll try again before it sends out a notification um, through email. If this is a critical website and Nagios.com is a critical website for us since it's our main website, we'd want to know immediately if it went down. So we would change this to a one and this to a one. The minute nagios.com goes down, XI will alert us and we can hopefully troubleshoot the problem. If it's not a mission critical system, it's like youtube.com or something, you're not too worried about it, you can change this to 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever you want it to be. Once you're satisfied with your interval, check interval settings here, you can click next. And these are the notifications on who's going to get it. Since this is a brand new XI instance, there's no one else in here. If you are running a IT team, You'll probably have a account for all of your team members and you can individually select which ones will get notified should a website go down. This is where you would do that. Again, since this is a brand new instance, there is no one to be notified if something were to go down. At the top here, you'll want to make sure it just says send notification immediately. And if your problem is still persistent and you will still want to be notified that your website is down, Every 60 minutes, XI is going to say, hey, by the way, Nagios.com is still down. This can be reduced down to every five minutes, so you're getting constant alerts, or you can have it be as long as you want. Once you're satisfied with these settings here, you can click Finish. And our configuration wizard has successfully completed. If we swing back to home here, you'll now see that the host status has two. And right inside here, we see Nagios.com. It is up. And if we click Nagios.com and we go up here and click services, we will also see that the services are coming back okay, which means they're not in our warning or our critical states. The final thing we're going to look at is the reports tab at the top. Now, this is where we would have a bunch of reports and graphs that have plenty of data to be able to make data-driven decisions. Some of the reports and graphs are only available in the enterprise version of Nagios XI. 
Again, since this is a brand new instance of XI, we don't have a ton of different things that are being monitored all at once. So the graphs aren't going to be well populated as an XI instance that's been running for a couple weeks, maybe even a month. If you want to learn more about our reports and graphs, I'll have a link to the video below. As you can see here, SLA report is part of the enterprise feature stated right here at the top. This basically is to make sure that everything that you have is compliant. So you can select which host and or host group, maybe even a service is within compliance. Once you select your host, you click run. XI will check it. And as you can see, this is 100% SLA compliant. Again, we'll have a video in the description below detailing and going more in depth on some of these graphs here. The final thing I want to mention is that Nagios XI has the capability of monitoring a number of things that aren't just a website. As you can see here, these are just some of the wizards that we have available. We also have a bunch available on exchange.nagios.com. Since we won't have a bunch of time to go through all of these today, you can look forward to some videos going through some of these various wizards. We also have some detailed documentation regarding all the wizards which can be found on our knowledge base. So that wraps up our Jumpstart video. As I said throughout the duration of this video, there will be a bunch of links in the description below that I highly recommend that you take a look at. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please visit support.nagios.com for more great documentation. Also be sure to stop by our YouTube channel for some more great content. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.